So it's been almost a year already since I got my new table saw and when I sold my old one, I sent along all of these sleds for it because the miter slots that were at different spacings on my old saw compared to my new one. And instead of just like moving the, the runners around just to make it fit, I just figured I'd give that stuff to the new owner and he could have that stuff to just kind of get right into using the saw. So I sent him the crosscut sled as well as a miter sled. Now a crosscut sled is something I used extensively and I really miss it. Uh, it's been kind of weird not having one and I really want to make a new one. So the way I make jigs and sleds and things is very utilitarian. I don't get fancy with the materials. Most of the time I kind of use whatever's in the shop and that's going to be no different for this one. So I'm essentially going to make exactly the same thing that I was using on my old saw for about four years before I got rid of it. I had no problems with it. That one started with a half sheet of MDF and the old one was a three quarter inch thickness for the base because I happened to have that size sheet goods in the shop at the time. So I got the sheet of half inch here that's in the shop already that's been sitting <laughs> back there unused for a really long time. I'm going to use this for the base of the sled. And for the runners, I have these runners that I made from Purple Heart a long time ago. <laughs> so when I started woodworking, just like most people, I was really, um, uh, I don't know what a good word for it is, but interested in Purple Heart. It was just this really cool thing that quickly kind of faded. So I built a project out of Purple Heart and I had an off cut from that project that never went to anything because I never used it again that I eventually just turned into stock for runners. So I milled a bunch of it down to three quarters of an inch to fit into the slots in my old saw. And these ones do kind of fit in this one. They are just a little bit snug at this point. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fit my runners so that they go in here a little bit better. I'm gonna take this over to the table saw, give them just like a light pass with a hand plane just until these things fit down into the miter slots really nicely without um, binding up. So these slide pretty nicely right now, and of course I can always fine tune those once I get the whole thing assembled. But next I want to get these attached to the base. So right now they are recessed below the surface of the table. So I'm just going to put a little spacer underneath them just to raise them above the surface of the table, make attaching them to the base a little bit easier. So next I can mark out the center of the runners so I know where to add the screws. So let's eyeball a mark roughly in the center on both ends, and then I connect them with a line. I can come through and add some screws and I'm going to put these back from where the fences are going to be just a little bit. So with these things attached, I'm not going to remove these little spacer things and just see how it works. Sometimes adding the screws in there can kind of tweak things a little bit and make them not slide as easily. It's still sliding pretty well, it's a little stiff. I'm going to add some wax to the bottom and to the runners, and then we'll see if that helps. If it's still a little too tight, I can always fine tune the runners a little bit with a card scraper or something just to take down a little bit of material. That's not bad. All right, so now I can start adding the fences. And the rear fence, I have this piece of ash. This was an offcut from when I made the bed swing, and I'll use that for the back fence. The back fence doesn't really matter at all. It has zero import importance besides holding the sled together when you cut that curve in the middle here. Just hold the two halves so the sled doesn't fall apart. So whatever you use for the back doesn't really matter. It doesn't need to be straight. It doesn't need to be perfect at all. And uh, last time I used a piece of pallet wood. So this is a little bit of an upgrade from the last sled. <laughs> So I'll just go ahead and screw this thing in place with four screws. I'm just going to make sure I avoid the area where the blade will be. So now we're on to the most important part of the sled, the front fence, where everything is referenced against as you're making those crosscuts. So that fence needs to be totally straight. It needs to stay that way. So for that, I like to use MDF as well. It's another way, great way to get rid of some more MDF scraps. So last time I had it glued up from two pieces of three quarter inch MDF, so a inch and a half thick fence. So again, I'm gonna go for inch and a half thick, but I have more of this half inch MDF. So I'm gonna rip some strips of that half inch MDF, glue them all together to make stock that's an inch and a half thick. 
So the glue is set up on this thing overnight, and I'm ready to trim this down to final width. And one of the things I like to do on laminations is offset one of the layers so it's the furthest thing on one side. So that way when I go to reference this thing against the fence, I have a nice straight edge here that I can use as reference against the fence and trim the opposite face nice and flush. So before I attach the fence, I'm going to add a chamfer to the edge, which will become the reference face for all the work pieces of the sled. This is just going to give the sawdust that might build up on the sled somewhere to go so a small bit of sawdust doesn't affect the accuracy of the sled. To start attaching the fence, I'm going to add a screw to one corner. That's going to allow me to pivot the other end to get this thing into square. So to set the fence for square, at least initially, I'm going to use a square against a piece of wood that fits down to the kerf to pivot the fence and bring it into square. So that looks pretty good, and now I can add a screw to the other side to lock it in, and then we'll check it for actual squareness. So to check this thing for square, I'm going to use the five cut method, which is popularized by William Ng in his video on his crosscut sled, and you can also find mentions of it in um, the Wood Whispers video on his crosscut sled, as well as Nick Ferry's video on his crosscut sled, and I'm sure there's other ones out there as well, but I'll leave links to those videos down in the description. So this method works on the principle of exaggeration. It's going to make the error in the sled very easy to see. So we're going to take a scrap piece of wood and make four cuts on it, referencing each cut against the fence. And on the fifth cut, we'll make a strip. If the fence on the sled is perfectly square, the two edges of that strip should be perfectly parallel. And we can check that by measuring both ends of the strip and comparing the numbers. All right, so I can use my calipers to measure each end of this thing. So down here I got 0 .571, 0 .506. So this is off by 0 .065, which is a sixteenth of an inch over about eight inches. So now I can work through the formula to figure out how much my fence needs to be pivoted to be brought into square. So I have the total variation 0 .016 divided by the length of this offcut, which is seven and a half inches. So I am two thousandths of an inch out of square per inch. Now my pivot points on either side of my fence are 45 inches apart. So now I can multiply the distance between the two points, 45 inches, times the deviation per inch. So I get a total deviation of 0 0.0975, or almost a tenth of an inch. So apparently my ability to eyeball square is not quite there yet. <laughs> that's all right. So I have my feeler gauges here. I don't have, obviously, something that thick. So I'm going to use a few of them to stack up to get to that thickness. I have 0 0.032, 0 0.03 and 0 0.028. I'm also going to throw in a 0 0.007, which should get me pretty close. I'm off by half a thousandths. So my screw is right here. So that's where I'm going to place my adjustment block. I'll put my feeler gauges in there and then clamp the block in place. Now I can remove the feeler gauge and then remove the screw. Move the fence until it touches this well, in my case, a push block. Drill a new hole, and then put a new screw in. So I think that one adjustment pretty much nailed it, at least as far as my crappy caliper is able to determine. So my difference from top to bottom is off by a thou, which is pretty good. Now the caliper, uh, it gives me a different reading uh, every single time I move them around, so the consistency isn't that great. But the difference between the top and the bottom stayed the same. So the top and bottom numbers might be up or low by one or two thou, but the difference between them was always a thou. So I'm guessing that it's fairly accurate. Um, so with this deviation, uh, over seven and a half inches, my total deviation is 0 0.000033 inches per inch. So over like a 12 inch length, my deviation out of square should be less than a thou, which is pretty good. Now that's great and all, but for me and the stuff that I do, as long as I can check it with a square, I can hold up to the light and I can see that there is no light showing here under the rule. That is good enough for me and I am totally happy with this. As far as I'm concerned, this thing is perfect.
So now all that's left to do is to add a few more screws to fully anchor in the front fence. So there we go, super simple, super basic, and super functional. And there's one thing that's a little bit of an upgrade from last time, and it's not intentional, is now I have this nice little tool tray up here on the rear fence that I didn't even plan on having, so I could put some chalk, or a pencil, or a marking knife, I can store those up there in the rear fence. That's a nice little bonus, right? <laughs> so, that's about it for this one. Thank you as always for watching, I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the crosscut sled, anything here in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.